Podcast Live, a company that makes live events where podcasters can perform, interact with an audience and host special versions of their regular shows, is today announcing its second event, Rugby at Twickenham. Podcasts involved include a number of independent shows, plus podcasts from Sky, The Times and The Telegraph. Spotify has launched a daily podcast playlist spotted by Vox Media's Zach Khan. Evo Terra notes that it appears to contain 10 new episodes of shows you're subscribed to in Spotify, a short clip telling you to try something new, and nine episodes from popular shows. We're not seeing it, but then the only podcast we subscribe to in Spotify is, well, it's this one. Dutch podcast newsletter Podprat has noted that Spotify's player, when shared on Twitter, now plays full podcast episodes in the player. Embedding the tweet might also be a simple way to get a nice-looking player on your blog or website, perhaps. More from Spotify, its SoundUp Podcasting Accelerator is back for 2019. It's a five-day accelerator program designed to educate and support women of colour in developing podcasts from idea to pilot production. Music service Tidal now appears to list podcasts, almost all their own programming though. Here's the Podcast of the Year at the Dutch Podcast Awards last week. The Brand in het Landhuis. The awards were built from a mix of public and jury votes. The iTunes performance marketing campaign, an affiliate system used by many podcasters to measure promotion of their Apple podcast shows, is changing name to the Apple Services Performance Marketing Campaign. Catchy. In Ireland, the Head Stuff podcast network is expanding into a former music studio complex and adding a membership program. The BBC is looking for podcasts with Hope Punk, whatever that is, and wants to find a new podcast blockbuster based around three key priorities, innovation, new voices and new audiences. That's according to their commissioning editor for podcasts, Jason Phipps. Bullet is a new iPhone app designed to help you share a clip from your podcast. We have an example of a tweet from that in our show notes and our newsletter. New talent alert from their recent competition, NPR, have posted eight podcasts from students in grades 5 to 12. That means age 10 to 18. We're linked to a podcasting workshop with a difference. The Himalayan Podcasting Workshop looks to be in a fabulous location. It's from July the 17th to the 21st. An event for you, the Best of the British Podcast Awards, is happening on Saturday the 16th of June as part of the Underbelly Festival in Southbank in London in the UK. And as a side note, the British Podcast Awards appear to have invested considerably in PR for their winners. We're linked to a piece in The Guardian today featuring a pre-ceremony photo shoot taken at the awards that even credits the sponsors. There's much to learn for other countries, we think. The company responsible is Carver PR. And The Illusionist has just added an extra live show in Perth on the 3rd of July after the previous one sold out. Their Twitter account adds, helpfully, the Australian Perth, not the Scottish Perth, or the Canadian Perth, or the several American Perths. We'd also add, not the river in New Zealand, nor the asteroid, nor the military flying boat. It's a Monday, so opinions are rife on the internet over the weekend. Bill Rosenblatt thinks that podcasting's future as an ad-funded medium is not rosy, and Jose Navarro thinks all podcasts from Mexico sound the same. There is no audience, he says, if there is nothing on offer. We need to diversify that offering, provide content that breaks the conventions of traditional radio. And in podcasts today, we talk about Kindred Cast that has Hernan Lopez, the founder and CEO of Wondery, enter common Cadence 13's To War and Back, The Daily from the New York Times, which has a special week on Europe and the UK's blunder through Brexit negotiations. Thanks for that. And Bear Brook, which played a role in identifying the victims of a serial killer. 